Hello, and today we're going to have a look at the first key area of the Waves Unit in National 5 Physics, Wave Parameters and Behaviours. The first thing that we need to understand is what a wave actually is. And a wave will transfer energy with no net movement of mass. So here we can see the wave moving left or right across the screen, but the duck, which is the mass, simply oscillates about a fixed position. Movement of energy, no net movement of mass. Now, there are two types of waves we need to be familiar with. The first is longitudinal waves. And this is a longitudinal wave. And we can see the direction of the wave is from left to right across the screen. But the particles within the wave are also oscillating left to right across the screen. So in a longitudinal wave, the vibration is in the same direction as the energy travels. An example of a longitudinal wave would be sound waves. Transverse waves are the opposite of this. Here we can see a transverse wave. And again, the direction of the wave energy is left to right across the screen but the particles that make up the wave are now oscillating vertically up and down the screen. So to define a transverse wave, the vibration is at 90 degrees to the direction which the wave energy travels. Some examples of transverse waves are water waves and electromagnetic waves. More about them in another video. some properties of waves that we have to be aware of. Firstly, wavelength. Now, the wavelength of a wave is the distance between a point on a wave and the same point on the next wave. So that could be from the peak to the peak or from the trough to the trough. Now, wavelength has the symbol of the Greek letter lambda and it's measured in meters. So that would be a wavelength there from the crest of that wave to the crest of the next. That would be a wavelength there from the trough of the wave to the next trough. And that would be a wavelength there from halfway down the wave to halfway down the next wave. These are the same distance. Amplitude has to do with the size of the displacement. So how, how far the particles within the wave vibrate. And we can measure it by the distance from the midpoint of the wave to either the crest or the trough. Amplitude has the symbol capital A and is measured in meters again. So that would be an amplitude and that would also be an amplitude. Now, frequency. The frequency of a wave is the number of waves produced per second. It has the symbol F and is measured in hertz. And we can work out frequency using this formula where frequency f in hertz is equal to n which is the number of waves produced or which pass a point divided by time so the time that that happens over if a wave has a fixed speed what that means is increasing the frequency will decrease the wavelength and vice versa so here we can see a long wavelength wave and the frequency is low. Whereas underneath, we have a wave moving at the same speed across the screen, but the wavelength is much shorter. So the wave motion is much more frequent. So a higher frequency will have a shorter wavelength and vice versa, provided the wave speed is the same. Period is sort of the inverse of frequency. So where frequency was the number of waves produced per second, the period is the number of seconds for one wave to be produced. Or we can define it as the time for one wave to be produced. And we can calculate it from frequency by working out the inverse. So one divided by the frequency is equal to the period. And indeed, the opposite is also true. 1 divided by the period is equal to the frequency. Period has the symbol capital T 
and is also measured in seconds. Speed. So, speed is defined as the distance travelled per unit of time. And it has the symbol V and is measured in metres per second. We can calculate speed using the formula V equals D divided by T, where V is the speed in metres per second, D is the distance travelled by the wave in metres, and T is the time it takes in seconds. A further equation is the wave equation, and it comes from the definition of the frequency and relating that to the time in the speed equals distance over time formula. And it brings us to this, that the speed of a wave is actually the frequency of the wave multiplied by its wavelength. Diffraction. Diffraction is a property of a wave where a wave front will bend as it passes through a gap or as it passes an edge. So here we can see the waves reaching this gap between the blue barriers and as they pass around the gap the wave fronts spread out to fill in the gap that's blocked out behind. If we've got a longer wavelength, a longer wavelength will diffract more than a shorter wavelength. And a consequence of that is that if we have a house in a hilly area like this, it will struggle to receive high frequency signals. Medium frequency signals will diffract a little more, but still miss the house. But a lower frequency, longer wavelength signal will be able to reach the house. And that explains why in very hilly regions, it's very difficult to receive mobile phone communications. And people that live in very hilly regions struggle to receive terrestrial television, but can usually receive AM radio without any problem at all. So, that's the end of this key area video. If you want to try some problems based on these, there is a, an accompanying video called Key Area Questions, which you can watch and is linked in the description to the video. I will see you again sometime soon. Bye-bye.